to enforce a law where there's confusion of the rules, though? You've got this possibly leading to a Class three felony. People would lose their rights. To well, the that's, that's an exaggeration that often occurs in right-wing media. The reality is that most people really do understand these rules. And, by the way, people are actually signing up, uh, registering their automatic uh, assault weapons, their... Um, their uh, uh, High speed, high capacity magazines, rather, and um, and you know, as we get closer to it, we're seeing more and more people actually do what they're required to do under the law. Governor, Governor, what, what, regardless of what the, what the JCAR rules say now and what they could say by the 16th, um, we know that you know when people register their firearms on the state police website that are deemed assault weapons. Obviously, like you've said before, we don't know of the 2.4 million people who have guns, who like period, who have assault weapons. Some people have FOIA cards, don't have any guns at all. But That's right. the, the percentage of people yeah. who've registered, though, it really hasn't changed much. I guess the concern is is that you have this law in place. and The percentage has changed a lot. It's gone up uh, 50% just in the last two or three weeks. It's After the dismal turnout for Illinois' assault weapon ban registration, things are heating up in the state. Or so it seems. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms, LLC. PAN Firearms, your NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like channel, like content, what I do here, you can support me with the link. Everything is appreciated. Once again, PSA for my Connecticut residents. If you plan on getting your Connecticut pistol permit, Please get the training done before the July 2024, because then after that, it becomes longer, harder, and more expensive for no other reason to disincentivize you from going out and getting your permit in order to purchase a firearm. If you have your permit, watch the expiration date. Don't let it expire. If you let it expire after July, you're going to have to do the new training. And as always, check in the description box. There is a link to the online renewal for parents here in Connecticut. Let's talk about this. And I've been talking about this for a few days now. Illinois' registration for assault weapon passed January 1st. And last count, 99.4% of Illinoisans with an FOID card have not registered their items with the state. And it's causing a lot of friction, apparently. Now, what is now happening, and there are, there's two stories I want to talk about, but I'm going to keep them separate because I don't want these videos to be too long, but I'm going to definitely follow up in another video on another issue that's going on in Illinois concerning driver's licenses. But Thomas DeVore, he is a attorney, and he is one of the lead plaintiffs in a suit against the state over the assault weapons ban. He took to Facebook and has presented a very, very interesting outtake that is causing some concerns in the state. I'm going to bring it up because we're definitely going to have to talk about it, but here it is here. It seems Governor Pritzker may be prepared to issue an executive order declaring an emergency should there be another mass shooting. It seems his executive order would be that all owners of the banned weapons who are on the registry would have to turn them over to the government. This is why Pritzker's minions are seemingly upset that nobody has registered their weapons. I warned people three years ago that Pritzker's abuse of the Emergency Management Agency Act could be used this way, declaring an emergency and demand people turn over their weapons to keep the public safe. He wants the registry for exactly these types of reasons. Boy, doesn't that sound like, you know, <laughs> that sounds like 1930s Germany to me. But now, come at it here. Pritzker, if you remember back during COVID, the governor issued disaster proclamations for COVID through executive fiat and orders. And what this person is saying here, what Mr. DeVore is saying, is that he's using these same executive actions to then claim that you know, mass shootings are a public health issue and that he could use his authority under this proclamation to then go out and say, well, in in regards to the safety and health of Illinoisans, those of you with banned items must turn them in. And 
I want to bring this up here because what he is basing this on is that he's an attorney, so he definitely probably has some very good connections. He's claiming that the governor's people have already drafted this executive action. Now, of course, the governor's office is immediately saying, no such thing, it's a fallacy, no such thing exists. But another organization, Gun Saves Lives, last fall leaked that based on the executive actions that he was taking during COVID, he was going to use that same executive authority when it came to firearms. Now you gotta back up a little bit to see the forest, not just the trees. I've been talking about this a lot. Think about how many times you've heard, especially Democrat politicians talk about gun violence as a public health crisis. Way back, I did a story on the CDC doing research into gun violence as an epidemic, a health epidemic. This all ties in together. What's going to happen here is the next mass shooting, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in Illinois. They're saying that Prisker can use that and then proclaim an executive order to then say, this is a health epidemic and for the public safety, you must turn in all the items that we banned under our new assault weapons ban legislation. We, and I'm talking about especially those of us who live in blue states, Washington, Oregon, California, New York, Maryland, Connecticut, Massachusetts, you need to pay attention to what's going on here because there is clearly, to me, in my opinion, a cabal across the country of these anti-gun leftist governors and state legislatures to push these kinds of things to circumvent the Second Amendment. I've been talking about it for quite some time. When one state does something, other states start doing the exact same thing. It's all a concerted effort. There's no doubt in my mind that they're all colluding with each other to push these kinds of things. Now this thing's going on in Illinois and you heard a little bit of the governor there. He's not too happy about the outcome of his registration, but apparently they're going a little bit deeper. And like I said, I got another story to follow this one up where once again, they're using the power of government to attack legal law abiding gun owners. But I thought this was very interesting because Illinois it apparently now is becoming ground zero for gun rights and what could transpire across the country. And we need to be paying attention to every gun case in every single state. Remember, I did a story in, what, maybe a week or two ago where the new Federal Office of Gun Violence Prevention gathered together all their anti-gun Democrats from states and Connecticut, we had a few of ours go to, to sit around to discuss how to prevent gun violence, which in reality, let's be real, they were sitting around trying to figure out how to take guns from law-abiding people because that's all they ever come up with. But once again, we need to keep our vigilance and keep our eye on what these people are doing behind our backs. Now, the governor's office says this isn't a fallacy, this isn't true, he doesn't have this kind of legislation, but I remember here in Connecticut when they passed HB 6667, when they were actually discussing it, all you heard them talk about was mass shootings in other states. And that's how they justified having this new law in Connecticut. So yes, I think that if a mass shooting happens anywhere, there's a good chance that Pritzker will pull all of a sudden magically pull out this legislation or this executive order and put it into play. But. Let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence, the statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one. Peace.